Hi, welcome back. Let me tell you a story about Kay. She lives five miles away from school and it usually takes her half an hour to drive to school. Do you think she drives fast or not? Well, most of the people I talk to tell me that she must drive very slowly. However, just the other day she got a speeding ticket for driving at 70 miles per hour on her way to school. Do you think that's possible? Well, it turned out this was what happened. This is Kay's speed versus time graph. She started from her driveway, picked up speed, red light ahead, slowed to a stop, sped up again. Unfortunately, there was a traffic jam, so she slowed to a crawl. When the traffic eventually cleared, she saw that she was going to be late, so she picked up her speed, and that's when she was caught. So when we heard five miles, half an hour, we thought she drove very slowly because her average speed, which is the total distance traveled divided by the time, was uh, five miles divided by half an hour, which equals to 10 miles per hour. Certainly, that is not very fast. But this information does not tell you how her speed changes at various moments. The speed at a certain moment is called instantaneous speed. We write V sub S without a bar on the top. And this is the instantaneous speed. Do you think the speedometer in your car measures the average speed or the instantaneous speed? A speedometer's reading changes as your speed changes, so it reads instantaneous speed. To measure average speed, we can measure the total distance traveled divided by the total time. But how does one measure the speed at a certain moment? It turns out that you still have to measure the distance over a certain amount of time. If you want to measure the speed at a certain moment, you will just have to measure the distance traveled in a relatively short amount of time, say in half a second, as long as the speed is relatively steady in that short amount of time. So instantaneous speed is also an average speed. It's distance traveled divided by the time. It's just an average taken over a very short amount of time. And we write this limit sign, L-I-M. Under the limit when the time is so short that it approaches to zero. And that's the instantaneous speed. And of course, the instantaneous acceleration is also an average acceleration, delta V over delta T. Again, this was an average taken over an extremely short amount of time. It is taken under the limit when the time is so short that it approaches to zero. And the instantaneous velocity is also an average velocity, delta X over delta T and of course, it is under the limit when the delta t is so short that it approaches to zero. Now let's take a better look at velocity and speed. In our daily life, we treat these two as pretty much the same thing. But in physics, they are different. Velocity is a vector coming from displacement, a vector. Speed is a scalar coming from distance traveled, a scalar. Sometimes they have the same magnitude, sometimes they don't. For example, if you run one complete lap around a 400 meter track, what are your displacement and distance traveled? Your displacement would be zero because your starting position and the final position 
they are the same. So the change in position is zero. But the distance traveled is 400 meters. In this case, the displacement and distance traveled have different numbers. What if you travel along the x-axis in the negative x direction for 400 meters without zigzagging or curving around? Your distance traveled would be 400 meters. Your displacement would be negative 400 meters. These two would have the same numbers, the same magnitude. It's just that your displacement has this negative sign for the negative x direction. So if you follow a zigzag bent or curvy path, your displacement and the distance traveled would not have the same numbers. Which means your average velocity, that is the delta x over delta t, and the average speed, which is the distance traveled divided by the time, would have different numbers. As for the instantaneous values, since they are averages taken over an extremely short amount of time, there is no chance for the object to curve or to turn around. So the instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed always have the same numbers. Which means we can say the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity is the instantaneous speed. Also, for instantaneous values, we don't really have to always say instantaneous in the front. We can just use speed for instantaneous speed and use velocity for instantaneous velocity. So if the velocity of an object is positive 20 meters per second, the 20 meters per second part is the speed, and the positive sign tells you about the direction. We can say that velocity includes two parts, speed and direction. But we can't say the same for average velocity and average speed, because they will not have the same numbers if an object goes zigzag or moves our curvy path.